So in fact, for the online lab, the purely online lab students, the lab will start on September 27th with the lab orientation. Uh, and during that lab orientation, uh, we have a computational assignment, and uh, <coughs> that is mandatory. Uh, it's not graded, though. Uh, you just have to do it to show that your Spartan actually works. So it's more for you than for us, uh, just to make sure you could install it and uh, you know the basic function. Um, we have 17 licenses for, for Spartan, uh, so we can have 17, 17 people uh, use it uh, simultaneously. And uh, so from now on and next week, it's the, the best uh, opportunity for actually uh, looking at the program and playing with it a little bit. Uh, uh, manual is available on our Blackboard site. Well, you, you can make yourself familiar with the software. Uh, after that, once the lab starts, uh, nobody but the people doing the labs are permitted to use it in the afternoon and early evening when we have early evening labs. Uh, otherwise, uh, the software is, is available. And even though 17 licenses for 330 students sounds very small, uh, in the previous year, last year, we had uh, we had no issues. Uh, so if students wanted to have access, uh, typically there were licenses left to access this. If we run into issues, uh, we will monitor that. Uh, then we will address it uh, down the road. And your first uh, real experiments then start uh, the week of October 4th, so that gives you really some time to uh, get accustomed with, with everything. Um, that's all I had to say for now. So for the in-person people, the uh, uh, online safety and lab orientation will start September 20th, and for those who just do online labs, it will start on September 27th. And in both groups, uh, that with their first experiment or the first computational assignment on the week of October 4th, I should say. Um, other than that, uh, like John and like most of uh, our colleagues in, in our department, uh, I'm involved in, in research. Uh, you can visit my uh, uh, website and see what we do and uh, also talk to any of my group members. Uh, some are in this course, so we do have uh, uh, undergrad students uh, doing research in our labs, uh, actually a fair number now, eight, eight, eight or nine at the moment. Uh, so if this is something that interests you or you just want to try out, uh, feel free to contact me or any other uh, faculty member in our department and uh, try it out. Um, I see there's one hand uh, raised. Gary, we have a question, I assume. I haven't checked the chat yet. Go ahead, Gary, if you have a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK, excellent. Uh, I don't see a chat box as an option here, so I'm just going to talk to you like this. Anyways, my question was, I tried to download the Spartan app onto my computer. Everything went flawlessly. But when you actually launch the app and uh, you try and work with it, the uh, error pops up saying that basically the license agreement that you have on your computer isn't correct or something like that. And it shuts down the app like automatically if uh, if you don't change it or anything like that. So I was wondering if uh, uh, anybody else was having issues like that with it. Yeah. Please. I don't want to go into those details. That's, that's certainly an issue we have uh, encountered before. Please send me an email, and then I will bring you in contact with one uh, of our GAs who helps you with computational issues. There, there are different reasons for why this can happen. Uh, and that person will monitor, make sure uh, there are licenses available. Because one reason is if all 17 licenses are presently used, it would not allow you to log in. Um, but the error message should be different to what uh, you have observed. Um, so just send me an email and then I pass it on to uh, one of our GAs. <coughs> and so and far, uh, as, 
As somebody pointed out in the chat, you also need the VPN active if you're not on campus. You need to be on the University of Windsor network, and so if you're not on campus, you need to have the VPN working. And so you can download that from the software depot. Mm. I'm on yeah. Campus. Yeah, so it should be. Yeah, check the VPN. Uh, we have a protocol for those things what to check. Uh, I assume you have a Mac, is that correct? Or do you have a PC? Uh, I have a PC on me, so I'm not <laughs> quite sure. Okay. Why it's, yeah. Yeah, break the, the difference. But yeah, please send me. Uh, in fact, I, uh, I can just uh, write down your name now and then inform one of our students, grad students, to, to help you with that. And if they can figure it out, so far they could figure out uh, all the problems uh, somewhat uh, quickly. Uh, we have a technical support person, uh, Jolie Shah, so he gets involved, uh, mm -hmm. then he can figure it out. <clears throat> but that's why it's important to uh, actually do it now, so that gives us enough time to solve any technical problems other than a bad internet connection. So that's uh, that's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything about it, but everything else uh, we should be able to to resolve. I also had a second question. Sorry for interrupting. Um, uh, how do we figure out which section we're in and how do we figure out like what number we are? Because on Blackboard for me, it says Chem 2300-1R-2021-F. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm A, B, 1, 2. You don't, there's no time given for, for your section. Apparently not. I have to talk to our lab coordinator uh, for that, and, uh, and we will post a, an announcement uh, clarifying that. That's a very good question. Because I saw you guys posted already an in-person lab orientation sheet for the fall, and here it has a bunch of days and a bunch of sections, yeah. and I'm not sure which section I'm in, so... Yes, yeah. I will uh, discuss that with uh, uh, Nidal, who is uh, the lab coordinator, so she does all the technical stuff and she uh, also assigns the lab groups to individual students. Uh, so she has a system, and uh, <clears throat> we will uh, announce that how so to make sure everyone knows how to figure out uh, what uh, section you are in. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your question. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, um, there's one more hand up. Two, in fact, Stefan, please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. Um, uh, for the person who was just asking how to find their section, uh, we were writing in the chat that you have to go to UWIN site, not on Blackboard. So you go to it's UWIN site on uh, the Manage My Classes, and it shows you which classes you're enrolled. And uh, for the CAM, there's two of them. There's one, the, the CAM lecture, and the other is the CAM lab. And at the end, it's going to have the A or whatever for the section code. And uh, if for the other person who's not able to see the chat, there's some icons on the top, like next to the one with the smiley face. Uh, it's like a uh -huh. bubble. Uh, it's show conversation. You click on that, it shows you the chat. Oh, I don't have that option here. So uh, are, are you on a desktop PC or are you on mobile? I'm on a laptop, so desktop. Uh, it's weird. Uh, don't you see uh, where it shows show participants with the t uh, the two notifications? Oh wait, hold on. There's yeah, a there toggle go. option for show chat. Yep. All right. <laughs> I Great. might have yeah. to log back in then. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. That was it. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. That has been resolved already. Excellent. So that's what we want to achieve uh, at the end of this course. You have uh, excellent problem solvers, uh, and some of you already do that. Excellent. Uh, Hamza, you have a question? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Hi. 
Hi, uh, thanks a lot. Um, I just wanted to ask about the labs. Um, are there going to be lab reports associated with the lab itself, or is it just um, the exercises during the lab and whatnot? Yes, well, it depends on which labs uh, you are taking. Uh, for, for the in-person labs, which means there are three wet labs, as we call them, in the actual uh, lab and uh, three computational assignments. Uh, for the uh, labs in person, so the wet labs, uh, you have one week to submit a lab report based on the data you obtained in the lab. Uh, for the computational labs, uh, you have to submit your lab report uh, right at the end of your lab section. So, um, so there's a bit of uh, time pressure. Uh, that's why it's good to get familiar with uh, the software ahead of time. <clears throat> and uh, you copy basically your results directly into the report and then submit the report at the end of your lab section. But we will go into, uh, we, ex we will explain it, that in more detail and also show it. Uh, that's also what uh, your uh, computational assignment for the orientation is for, to actually go through the process and, uh, and uh, check it out. So the submission then is through Blackboard. Sounds a bit complicated at the moment, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. That's a good question though. Okay. okay. I think uh, I leave the stage for John now, uh, and I assume he wants to go ahead with uh, going over the syllabus quickly, and then perhaps already do some organic chemistry. Uh, talk to everyone later, and uh, enjoy uh, the new term, and hopefully our course. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, Holger. Um, so I'm going to try and monitor the chat, but I'm having the same issues that the rest of you are having as well, which is um, I'm getting a really good. I just want to make sure I'm going to start. I'm actually doing this right. OK, there we go. I'm getting a really uh, like just beeping constantly, and uh, so hopefully I think I've muted them. So hopefully this does actually work. So I'm going to leave the um, I'm going to leave the chat window open. Yeah. So let's. I had this. I still have this thing arranged as if I was doing this in person. But let's talk a little bit about some housekeeping. Um, so I think. So first of all, let's talk about muting shit. Um, because that's probably the most important thing for all of us. So I'm actually just going to share my screen because I think I just figured out how to do it. Um, there we go. So this is my my chat channel. And uh, I think you muted yourself, John, I think. Oh now you are You're still muted. Yeah. I'm muted. I'm sorry. There we go. OK, that's going to be better. Um, so before we start with, I have all this thing arranged so that I'm here to do this in person. The lectures in person. Um, I'm really sorry for that muting just now. That was weird. Um, but I think the first thing we should do is figure out how to mute everything. You're muted again. You're muted again. How am I managing that? OK. Again. Is somebody muting me? Are you clicking on the tab? Yeah, I'm clicking away from the tab. Let's see what happens. That's OK. Um, so under the settings, I keep checking back here. So um, just this settings button. Under notifications, you can turn off the notifications. Play sound for incoming calls and notifications, just turn that off. Um, 
Um, you can also probably customize and do more stuff in there, but that's the emergency, so you don't have beeping going off every five seconds. Did it again. And I'm just hitting the window. There we go. OK. I think this is working. So um, this is still set for online. Yeah. Um, so this is, I'm, I'm still ready to set, set this thing online. So let's talk about a few things. One is, yes, I am going to be recording all of these sessions. Yes, they are going to go up onto the YouTube channel. Yes, the links. Um, I think that the YouTube channel link is in the syllabus, and so you can find it there. The files are going to be called by today's date. Um, so there's that. All of the lectures are already online, so this is a flipped course. Uh, in class, we are going to be solving the problems. All the lecture material is already present online. All the notes are already present online. All the assignments for the entire course are already present online. The syllabus is hyperlinked so that you can click on a section and it should take you to the right video. I hope I set that up right. Um, for some of the sections and some of the subsections, there are multiple videos because it took more than one lecture. Uh, you can watch them at two times speed. You can watch them at one time speed. You can not watch them if you don't want to. You can the PDF and PowerPoint versions of all of the presentations and the marked up versions of those are available for you online. So all of the material is available for this entire course is available to you right now. What we want to be using the course time for is working through solved problems and um, or solving problems or addressing things where somebody's going, I don't understand this. Can we go through it at a different angle? So the goal is to make sure that we're trying to do it that way and use the time for those kinds of things. Um, so what about the textbook? The textbook is uh, the second edition. You know what? Well, I don't know if I have it written down here, but the textbook is the second edition of Ogilvy. It is in the syllabus. You have to buy it. I'm so sorry. The reason you have to buy it is because uh, part of your mark depends on doing stuff from the textbook. We're using the online learning management system as much as I hate it to do some evaluations throughout the term. You're also um, I think the non annotated versions are also uploaded already. I think everything is uploaded. You have annotated and non annotated, uh, Katie. Um, and I'm 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 going to be just starting with blank slides for every single one of these lectures. They're just I might stick some University of Windsor branding on them or something, but they're just going to be blank. There's not going to be any unannotated version of the slides that we're going to be doing in course. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to go through all this. So yeah, you need to get the textbook. The textbook is through Top Hat. The reason you need to get the textbook is because some of the marked assignments we're going to we talk about the evaluation. We'll go through that are marked through Top Hat's learning management system. Um, and. You're also going to be graded on completing all of the in text questions and for correctness of the relevant chapters. And the relevant chapters are the ones that are mentioned in the syllabus. The reason we're doing that is because we are doing a flipped course system. Um, all of the research into university pedagogy says that small, low value assignments, making sure that students follow along through the textbook, uh, really improves student outcomes. And I am not a education researcher, so I trust the education researchers are on that. Um, and so it's worth about 5% of your mark to go through and do the problems. Uh, no, you it wouldn't work to just buy the hard copy of the textbook. Uh, you you need the online learning management system. I'm, I'm really sympathetic to people who don't want to do that. Um, but this we're, we're online, we're remote, and we need to make use of the tools that we have because we can't do a lot of stuff in person that we would be doing in person normally. OK, I, I'm going to start going through <laughs> slides and then we'll come back and do questions as we go. Um, I'm actually going to save 
the first part of my presentation for later, which is all about organic chemistry, because we're actually running a little low on time and I want to make sure we get through the material. So I think we'll do like an introduction organic chemistry thing later. Uh, I just pressed a button. There we go. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, sorry, so I'm going to update this. So um, the purposes of this course is to provide a fundamental understanding of how organic chemistry works. Uh, and is to provide you with the basic language of organic chemistry. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means. We're looking to broaden your knowledge base for those of you who aren't going to really take any more chemistry courses after this. Um, and we're going to practice learning critically to think about new problems and entirely new different ways of doing it. So, yeah, um, Mohammed, I think you might need to find uh, you have to silence in both the Teams window that we're currently in and in Microsoft Teams desktop app. Like there's two places you need to silence it because. All so yeah, all of the questions that are in the textbook. In the text part of the textbook, like as you're going through and you're flipping through and it's like here, here's like a statement and there's a little question, another statement, another little question. Those are graded for completion and correctness. 75% for completion, 25% for correctness. The questions at the end of the chapter are not graded. Those are for your practice only. Uh, you can do them or not do them. Um, you can do any of them or not do them. That, that's entirely up to you. But the ones within the text of the material are graded. And everything is in the syllabus. Absolutely. Thank you, Amber. I, I think I did a good job on the syllabus this time. Please read the syllabus. So I said read the syllabus. So it's the second edition is is absolutely necessary. Um, lab manual and everything is on Blackboard. All notes are going to be posted on um, on YouTube. The notes will be on Blackboard. The videos will be on YouTube after each lecture. So this is the evaluation. There are three ways you can be enrolled in this course. You lucky people. Um, so you can have 2300 in person lab, 2300 online lab, or you could be 2305, which is for those of you who are not taking any more organic chemistry classes and are not taking the lab. And those are mostly non science majors. If you're a science major, you should be enrolled in one of the 2300s in general. So the lab is worth more for the in-person people than the online people. That's because you are doing extra stuff in the in-person one. And so we have weighted that more heavily, uh, which is good. The lab marks are normally quite high, so there's a benefit to being in person. The midterm sort of takes up a lot of that slack. 17% um, for in-person, 22% for the online. The questions in the text, these are the ones I was just talking about. These are the ones that are in the text itself. They're worth 5% of your grade. There is no reason you should not get five out of five. You have infinite number of tries at the questions. Um, there are going to be four graded assignments. These are going to be online. They're going to be available for 48 hours. And that that's when the window is open. You're going to be able to go in. You're going to be able to do the assignment. Um, and you get to take the best three, four marks out of four. These are going to be massively randomized. So there's like I make like 20 versions of each question. And then you randomly get assigned one of the 20 questions because they use the random number generator. So everybody's exam is going to be completely different from everybody else's exam or uh, assignment. Um, but they're all similar kind of levels of difficulty. The exams are also random, uh, massively randomized as well. There's a SciComm, Sci Communications assignment, 5% uh, of the grade or 7.5% of the grade for people in 2305. There is the possibility for the top 20 in the class to get an extra up to 5% bonus uh, and this is described in the syllabus and we can talk about it more as well. Um, the final exam is then worth uh, different amounts depending which of the sections you're in. So um, I'm going to just talk. I uh, take up some of the questions that came up while I was doing this before I move on. Uh, the computational assignments are not yet posted as Dr. Icorn has mentioned. Um, the questions in the text are not due at any specific time. They are we will grade them for completion and um, correctness at the end of the course. That's when I go in and I grade them. So that and it just gets done automatically by robots. So um, they're not due till the end of the course. When will we know the date for the midterm? Uh, probably in the next week or two. Uh, I get, I really just need to pick it. 
Uh, we can actually kind of have a poll over whether you want to do it before or after um, reading week. And generally, we try and talk with the other professors who are teaching these big second year courses so we don't give you all your midterms within 24 hours of each other because we often do that because we all think the best dates are the same dates. Um, calculators aren't allowed because you're not going to need calculators, but you can do anything you like because you're going to be at home writing exams. So I used to have calculators not allowed on any of the exams. Um, it just made it easier, but these are all exams and are a completely open book. Um, the SciComm assignment is required. It is not optional. There is an op there's a possible extra 5%. You can you can do a very low intensity or high intensity version of this to get almost all the marks. Um, the assignments on Blackboard are the ones that say assignments. So those are the ones that you can do for. Uh, so Samantha asked, where do I find my assignments so under assignments under resources? And so there's pro there's um, the questions and the solutions. And those are more similar to the kinds of questions I'll be asking on the exams. OK, I think. Um, I think that's how many questions are there on the assignments on average? I think for the marked assignments, there's going to be about 10 questions. You're not going to be able to go back. So for those, you're going to get a question you have to answer before proceeding to the next question. If you were in a time crunch, I'd be sympathetic to being able to go back and look at all the questions and figure out which ones you want to do first. You have a 48 hour window to do 10 questions. It should take you about an hour and a half, maybe less. Um, the assignments are kind of the, the online. These assignments here are. Automatically markable doesn't necessarily mean they're multiple choice. Um, there's all sorts of cool things. I think they're cool. You will probably think they are less cool things we can do with auto marking uh, where yeah, they are multiple choice, but there might be 20,000 choices. So but there, there's a correct answer string that you would insert and you would get the marks. OK, I will I will post the on the unannotated ones then Jeanette if I haven't. I'm sorry. Uh, the assignments are not timed. You have 48 hours. Yeah, um, they the great assignments will show up in your top hat and I'll, I'll sh share that when that goes up. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about the SciComm questions later. You do the textbook questions, uh, Zayad, you do the textbook questions directly in the textbook. When you download it, you have a join code, which I posted in Blackboard. You log that, it logs, it connects your textbook up with this course, and then everything just kind of talks to each other. Uh, you, uh, If you buy the Top Hack content online, you do not need to buy the hardcover textbook. The top Hack content is the textbook. Um, top Hat is also not lending you the textbook. You own this textbook, so this isn't something that expires after 12 months or something stupid like some of these companies are doing. Uh, this is a permanent textbook that you're going to own. Yes, assignments are kind of mini quizzes. Yeah, I will actually post uh, some of the side comments from last year, so general ideas because we had some really good ones last year. Uh, midterms and exams will not be multiple choice. Uh, there will be no multiple choice questions on either of them. They will be all long answer. Uh, somebody wants to cry. That's good. Crying is good. OK, uh, I think we can move on from this. So uh, notes about evaluation. You must pass either the final or the midterm to pass the course. Um, you must attend all the labs and turn in all laboratory reports uh, because of COVID. Um, we're being a little bit more lenient with this if you are missing it for illness, um, but you do need to contact your GA and talk with uh, Dr. Icorn and get confirmation on how to proceed should you miss a, a lab. Um, and there are no makeup tests. So sorry, just coming back to questions in the chat. Um, is it possible to get Top Hat without buying a book or no? Uh, Top Hat is the same price. Like the book is Top Hat. Top Hat is the book. It is all online. You can buy a hard copy of the first. I'm not even sure the second edition is actually released as a hard copy. I think the second edition is only released through Top Hat. And I absolutely hate that, but we are remote this term. 
Uh, somebody said, can I switch to online labs only? I think you need to discuss that with um, Dr. Icorn and uh, Nadal, the lab coordinator. Uh, the, there's a lot of people looking to switch, and so those are really full. Yeah. OK, uh, you can get a hard copy from Top Hat there, Amber. Thank you. So, uh, but you do need the online version. So attendance in all lectures and labs is mandatory. Um, it's not. The lectures are not mandatory. Uh, this is old boilerplate. The labs are absolutely mandatory. You have to show up for your time. We only have so many Spartan licenses. If you don't show up for your time, you do not get to do the lab and then you get a zero and then everyone's sad. So show up for your lab time when you have your lab. Um, the lectures is entirely up to you if you want to attend or not. Uh, your adults, um, I'd recommend attending, but your adults. Um, cheating and plagiarism are offenses. Um, it was kind of fun last year because with massively randomized questions, some people cheated by answering the questions that they didn't have on their exam, which made it really easy to give them a zero for the course. So yeah, then the questions are very, very similar. So it's um, that's a lot of fun on our perspective. So please do your own work like you know that. Uh, there will be some tutorials coming online where I'm going to be doing this in the course time, but we will also have graduate assistants uh, able to sort of answer questions in a similar kind of forum. And the idea there is that, you know what, maybe no matter how I explain it, I am just not the right person to explain this thing to you, but that GA is the right person to explain it to you. Or as somebody posted in a chat earlier, there are all sorts of online resources that you can use to help talk about the content. I encourage you to use any resource you like, um, whatever works for you. If my lectures do not work for you ever, then you're wasting your time with them. Um, what we're trying to do with the flipped course is make it so that I can sort of adjust to you when you're saying, hey, I don't understand it this way. I can try something else. Uh, a traditional lecture development, I don't really have a time to do that. I kind of have to power through the material and I can maybe talk about something two or three different ways, but maybe I needed four or five or six to get to some people. And that's not because you're stupid. It's just any given way of explaining things isn't going to work for everybody. There's there's no magic word that does it. Um, so you're expected to arrive in, in again. Try not to disrupt it. Uh, last year we had somebody who wanted to play Call of Duty during class and had their video. on. Please don't play Call of Duty in class, uh, and if you do, then you know uh, don't share your screen and turn your microphone off. So I always get asked, how do I do well in this class? Um, that's why I wrote a letter because I, I keep trying to find the magic words where somebody will will get that. Um, so come to class. It's useful. Participate in class. This is especially important in the flipped course model. If you want, if you're if you're too nervous to ask a question directly in class, send me an email before class saying, hey, I'd like to go over this question from the textbook or I'd like to go over this question from your assignment or I didn't understand this thing in your lectures. Uh, whatever it is, you can send it to me beforehand. I'll look that up and make sure I cover that. Um, yeah. Please keep up with the studying and the practice problems. Like this is the most important thing. Students who keep up with the material do well. Students who don't, don't. It's 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 almost like a perfect correlation. Like we don't get perfect correlations in science outside of physics. Like things just don't line up that way. There's variance. But this it, it this is absolutely perfect. Like students who struggle with the concepts but keep up with it still do really well in the course. And students who are geniuses and don't keep up with this still do really poorly in the course. So um, again, concepts not memorizing examples. The questions will be new on the exams. So if you memorize how to do something, it's going to be different. So really, really focus on trying to understand how things work. Uh, take advantage of my office hours and take advantage of the flipped course. Please ask questions. That's what this is all about. Um, so what do I mean by a flipped course? So a flipped course is all the rage in pedagogy. And the idea is that in a normal course, the way we do this is I lecture to you. I transfer information, I fire like I'm doing right now. I just talk and you sit there passively listening and then you go home and you, you know, try stuff, practice problems, study, uh, watch YouTube videos, what whatever uh, you guys do. 
the idea here is okay. The lecturing is, is a passive process, and maybe my lecturing is not the best way for you to look at the material. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm providing all the resources. The lecture videos are all on YouTube. The notes are all available before class. You go and you look at that. In class, what we are going to do is we're going to answer. I'm going to basically spend the time doing a question and answer period with you for an hour going. Where are you guys having trouble? If you're not, if nobody says anything, then I will work through some problems. Um, but if anyone is having trouble understanding anything in the material, and again, you can send me an email ahead of time and it will be anonymous and I won't share your name if you're nervous about that kind of thing. But if you're having trouble with it, 30% of the class is having trouble with it. And all this material is hard. So in a lot of cases, everyone's going to be having trouble with it. I'm happy to go over it in a different way or explain it or work on that and then have a back and forwards with you. So the idea that this is going to be a much more interactive kind of course than a traditional lecture where we stand up in front and talk. Yes, Amanda said just to confirm the problems due in the text are the ones labeled practice problems. Yes, they are the problems within the text itself, not the ones at the end of the chapter. The end of chapter tech problems are not graded. You can do as many of those as you want. I recommend you do all of them, but the they are not graded. Um, we should know the midterm date next week. So um, this is why I come to class or why I look at my videos if you like, uh, because I don't want to write the exams. And so I tend to spend more time talking about the things I think are important, and those are also the things I tend to examine. So it's probably a good idea to know how I think. Um, you know, again, I want to provide you with multiple different methods of learning. So this course is best approached by solving problems. And for some people, you don't really know how to start. You haven't seen a lot of those, and that's why we want to do it together as a group. Um, and we're also going to try and clarify things. So if you've seen the videos, you've read the notes, and you still don't get it, I might be talking about it again in class through a different mechanism or a different method, and that might work better for you. Um, again, any information about timing is all going to be sent in writing. Anything that affects an evaluation is sent in writing. But I will say all sorts of things in class. Um, normally, every class I ever had somehow that you guys develop some inside jokes that happen in the chat windows or happen in the class, and those get used on the exam as a bonus question or something. It happens every year. And we're really going to be practicing solving problems. So if you're stuck in how to do this, this is what this is all about. So this is going to be really, really interactive. I hope. I really, really hope because right now I am staring at 300 odd black screens, but you know, hopefully we're going to discuss. You can use, I say read the text to reinforce your understanding. You can use any resource you want. If you have to do the problems in the top hat text, but if you find the way that the, the Ogilvy book is explaining things just doesn't make any sense to you, you can have a YouTube video open or Khan Academy or you know some other organic chemistry textbook or Wikipedia or your older brother's notes or older sister's notes or your neighbor's notes, whatever. Like use whatever resources you want to learn the material. Um, but I just want to say this as many times as possible. Do as many practice problems as possible. Organic chemistry is probably learnt much more like mathematics than like biology or anything else. This is a problem based course. My questions on the exams are all going to be problems and to get good at answering problems. It's probably a good idea to practice answering a lot of problems. Um, the lecture, so OK, so I'm going to follow up a few questions in that have arrived here. Uh, so for the labs, why is the assignment released a week before? I'm going to leave that to Dr. Icorn to answer. Um, another lab question, I'm going to leave that for Dr. Icorn to answer. The lecture slides during class time is going to be the same ones you have posted on Blackboard and on YouTube channel. Uh, no, they're not. I'm never actually going to use those in the lecture times. So lecture time are going to be blank slides and we are just going to work problems. There's not going to be anything on them. So I'll post them once I'm done, but the idea is that they're meant to complement all that or they're meant to address the problems you had with how I failed to explain it well when I lectured this last year. Um, is the exam midterm based on a book or the lecture? The exam midterm are based on the questions that I'm going to ask. Um, 
my the assignments I have written and put it on Blackboard are probably the best guides to what the questions are going to look like. The material covered in the lectures is the material covered in the selected chapters of the books, so it's the same material, but the style of asking the questions is, is going to be my own. And I make new questions every year. Um, yeah, so we're supposed to watch lecture one before Monday's class continue following that schedule. Yes, roughly. Um, we might get a little bit ahead or a little bit behind where the lectures are, and I'll try and sort of keep track of that. I actually just posted a rough schedule to the syllabus section where you can sort of see how we plan to progress through the course over the entire course. Uh, that schedule will not be followed, of course, because no schedule ever is. But it's it's a good guide of where you should try and be in your studying. Um, yeah, we're going to start course content probably next class. Yes. Uh, maybe after a little introduction thingy, but we'll. Start a little bit of course content next class. What about the questions on the exams? We'll be able to go back and check them. Yeah, those are all actually the exams are going to be massively randomized, but they're going to be you write down your answers. They're not multiple choice, so. You're going to you would be able to get it and print out your entire exam and then you'd be able to write your answers down. You're going to take photographs of your answers. You're going to upload them. Um, it's basically like writing a normal exam. Uh, the six digit code for top hat is posted on Blackboard as an announcement. Um, So yeah, in the syllabus it says you get written permission for a Psycom idea, she will email you directly. If it's really unusual, um, so basically if you're doing a video explaining something, if you're doing an infographic explaining something, if you're doing a, um, a drawing or a other type of typical kind of um, um, descriptive tool, you don't need to ask me for that. If you're going to do interpretive dance, I probably want to know a little bit more about it before you go ahead and do it because it does need to do science communication. Um, no, you don't need anything other than textbook for the class. Uh, you need the lab manual. But if you, I, I strong, I recommend that you get a, a model kit, a molecular model kit. Uh, I really like the Darling model kits; they're my favorite. But you can get a cheaper one if you like. They're all about the same price, way too expensive for little pieces of plastic. But I, I strongly recommend that. Otherwise, you can get marshmallows with toothpicks and color your marshmallows with pencils or colored markers. That works as well. Um, there are some online tools for visualizing things, but I strongly recommend getting a model kit and playing actually with three dimensional models. Uh, yeah, the, the the syllabus has the assignment schedules because it's the syllabus and it has all the schedules. Uh, yeah, and the YouTube lectures I am referring to the first edition when I suggest practice questions. For this course, I suggest all I've gone through. We've actually deleted all the questions we think are stupid. Uh, most of the questions we think are stupid. We, there are some questions that are stupid, but they're really, really important for MCATs because MCATs like asking really stupid questions. So we left those in. Uh, but I recommend all the questions that are still there in the online textbook. So any question in the online textbook is suggested. The overall scope of this course, uh, we have three minutes left, is um, the first part is going to be review. You are going to be lulled into a soft, soft, uh, false sense of security in the first week. It is going to be boring and review for 90% of you. For 10% of you, you're going to be going, I've never seen any of this before, so that's why we do it. Um, then we're going to start switching into talking about structure and properties of organic molecules, confirmations of organic molecules, uh, stereochemistry. All this is kind of what I think of as the preamble to the course, uh, which takes way too long. And then we uh, jump into chemical reactions, talk about acids and bases, um, chemistry of double bonds, substitution chemistry and radical chemistry which isn't as fun as it sounds. So again, when I'm evaluating, I am looking for an understanding of concepts. Um, 
that is what I am evaluating. I am evaluating your ability to think about organic chemistry and um, solve problems in organic chemistry. Uh, that that becomes even more the case in a completely open book environment like this. You and by open book, I mean, and I'm going to define it for you for the before the exams, but roughly you can use anything except another person. If you can find it online by Googling, it is allowed for you to use, but you can't talk with other people. Yeah, everything's cumulative. The. Um, everything and this is the problem is that this entire course is not modular. Everything scaffolds on everything else. It's not like I can say, oh, great. It, not like this is medical school where, you know, you learned about the heart last week. Now you can forget everything you know about the heart because you're now learning about the liver and then you're going to be learning about infectious disease and the liver doesn't matter anymore. This everything here builds on everything else. Everything is interlocked and interlinked. And we try and organize it such that it makes the most sense for learning, which is why chapters four and five are kind of all over the place in the course because they don't necessarily make sense to introduce as a unit. So everything builds on everything else. So you need to keep up with it because if you go like oh, I just didn't get that, I, it doesn't really matter. We're not we're moving on from that. We're not moving on from anything. Everything keeps coming up and playing into everything else. Uh, yeah, and the rough schedule has dates for 2020. I couldn't be bothered to change the year. Um, the days and the months are right, but the year says 2020. I'm sorry. It is 2021. Um, the actually the times have been announced. Uh, if you can't make the time and you want to meet for office hours, please email me. But the flipped course thing, it really is meant to be able to do a lot of what we would do in office hours during course time. But if you do need to make an appointment to talk about something, please, please email me. Our job is to be available for you. Again, check your email regularly. Um, Email is the official mode of communication. I will send official notifications through email. If you didn't read your email, that's not an excuse for not getting the official mode of communication. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, Dr. Icorn has already talked about that. So in summary, um, <laughs> we didn't talk about why study organic chemistry because we talked about other stuff today, but it's Basically, when we're thinking about science in general, physics is the study of the rules of the universe, and biology and engineering are the study of the way things are generally. Chemistry is the study of the tools we can do to change the way things are by using the rules of the universe. We're not, as chemists, our job is to invent new things that don't exist and to sort of upend how everything works. So when it comes down to it, um, this is how the world changes. It changes through chemistry. And almost all of that is through organic chemistry. And again, I just, I can't emphasize this enough. Please keep up with the material. I I know I'm saying this, I, I've, I've written it down. Um, more, if you ask more senior students who've done well in this class, they'll say the same thing to you. Like it's 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 new. This is a new way of thinking. A lot of you would never have seen anything like this stuff before. It's like you know you're entering a new language class uh, in Russian, and you don't speak Russian, and you've never taken classes in Russian before. And we're starting from the beginning, so it's an entirely new way of thinking. This is a completely different way of thinking than almost all the science you've seen so far. It is really really challenging uh, to do that if you don't try and keep up. So. If you're finding you're struggling, please reach out. We are here to help. We have extra GAs who are here to help. And we're really here to try and support you and make you succeed in this course. There's nothing that makes us happier than handing out, you know, 348 pluses at the end of the semester because everyone mastered the material. That's that's our ideal and is possible. But if you do start falling behind and you do start struggling, um, try and address that as quickly as possible because it, it does. We just keep going. We just keep building on stuff. And this is probably an uncrammable course because you're not trying to learn knowledge. You can cram knowledge. Anyone can cram knowledge. Um, but this isn't about knowledge. This is about systems thinking and ways of solving problems, and you can't cram that. You just need to be practicing it all the way through. So I'm not going to plead with you to keep up with the material again. Um, that's on you. You can choose to do it. You can choose not to do it. 
uh, but you've been told that that is in almost all cases what leads to success and in almost all cases is what leads to failure is not doing that. OK, I think I hit the black screen at the end of my slideshow. We are at 223. Um, I, I agree with everything Nora says there. It's. This is hard. A lot of you aren't you're you're some of you are going to struggle with this and you might not have struggled with anything before. Um, try and reach out for help, please, 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 please. Because that's what all of your teachers are here for. Um, there's a lot of us and we're really going to try because we want to see you all succeed. Are there any questions? Not hearing any. OK, uh, not hearing any questions. Where would you recommend buying an Orgo kit? Um, I like I, as I said, I like the Darling models. I would buy the cheapest Darling model I could possibly find online. You're not going to need it for a few weeks. Amazon's not necessarily the cheapest place to buy anything. Um, they, they really mark up the prices so you can get them from Amazon, but just uh, be cautious about that. You're, you are going to be paying a bit more than you could from other sites. Um, you're not going to need it for a few weeks, so it can take a few a week or two to ship ship. Shasta, you're saying you're unable to see any messages in the chat. Are you logged in on your U Windsor account? Yeah, you are. I'm not sure. Do you have your chat window open? There's a chat button here. If you you have to click this button to see the chat. Huh. Uh, you know what? Maybe maybe me, our yeah maybe me, uh, email IT server. No, kits are not mandatory. Uh, you don't need to buy the kits. I, I recommend it. If you're not used to thinking in 3D. Huh, OK, there's some interesting issues. Um, but if you're not used to, if you're a sculptor or a potter or an architect or a dancer, you're actually going to have an advantage because you're probably used to thinking in three dimensions. Uh, but if you're not used to thinking in three dimensions, I strongly recommend getting a kit because it will help you think in three dimensions. And it's a very different way of thinking than when you're not doing that. OK, I have no idea what's going on with the chat. I'm. I think it's working for a lot of people and not for others. How did you get dark mode? I don't know. I think I must have just played around with settings at some point. I don't remember. I'm old. My memory doesn't work. Which is why I'm an organic chemist, because I don't need to remember anything. Yeah, an organic chem. So a Darling model kit is an organic chem. It's just a kit. It's a. Yeah, there's. Sure. Well, I don't need to give up the lecture hall to anybody else, so we can keep rolling a little bit. Um, uh, so I'm back to my screen. This is the one I like. It's called Molecular Visions. Um, by Professor Dar it's called the Darling Kit because it's by Professor Darling, but it's a Molecular Visions kit. And you know, it's like sticks and balls, and you can make things and draw them. And this is not a real molecule. This is me fucking around, but that, that's OK. Um, it's useful to start thinking about these kinds of things and how stuff is positioned relative to each other in three dimensions. Thank you, Lauren. So for the chat to show up, you need to select the class channel and not the general channel. Yeah, uh, we did suggest the kits. They are available from the bookstore. They actually have physical kits at the bookstore. The pricing is quite good. Um, I think it's better than Amazon. You can, of course, uh, I saw somebody po point out AliExpress. AliExpress is great for cheap stuff. Um, it flies in from China. Just watch the shipping. Any kit works. 
absolutely any kit works. I, I, I am biased. This is my kit. I will have every one of my other faculty members will use a different kit that they really like. I just really like this kit. And I'm sorry, yes, I was saying the Darling model kit and kit and molecular chemistry molecular model kit. I um I'm sorry for the nomenclature there. I was using multiple terms, all mean the same thing. Balls and sticks you can attach together to make atoms. Um and again, you can I I have seen people use and I've actually done it myself, a marshmallows and toothpicks. But the problem with marshmallows and toothpicks is you don't have the right angles all pre-built. Um these kind of kits all do. So I recommend these kits. Yeah, um, first lecture for Monday. You can watch it. What you the other thing you can do, and it's always a possibility, is if if you look at the notes, the annotated notes and things, you go, I'm I'm looking at this, I've read the textbook, you might not need to watch the lecture. I'm not saying you have to watch the lecture. I'm saying I am making the lectures available to you. I'm also making all the annotated notes available to you. So you might be looking through the notes and you're going, oh, I don't get this. So you watch that 10 minute section of the YouTube video only. That's fine. Um, so how you interact with that material is up to you. But in the lecture part of the course, like this, this time slot, I am going to act as though you are all caught up with this. Um, this is kind of similar to, you know, if you're doing like a literature class and in class you're talking about the book, we just assume you've read the book. So I assume that you have looked at the material. I will come with questions that I will be ready to go through. Uh, I'm happy to have them hijacked because somebody has some other questions and we don't get to them, that's fine. So uh, Mohammed asked when the textbook assignments are due, that means when are the, when are the questions in the textbook due? Right, the mark automatically mark questions in a textbook. That's what you mean, Mohammed. I'm like, yeah, okay. They are due at the end of the course. They are going to be all auto marked at the end of the course. I'm not going to be looking at progress before then. I strongly recommend you carry you continue with it all the way through. It is meant for you to do that. Um, it's going to be a little bit irritating to try and shotgun them at the end if you haven't done them because you do get marks for getting them right, but. Yeah, December 10th in Top Hat, yeah. So um, they told me that I shouldn't do that and that I should have them gated all the way through, but again, you're adults, I trust you. So yeah, everything about Spartan and the VPN will be posted. You're also gonna do lab orientation stuff ahead of time. So there's gonna be an orientation lab before you're actually doing a lab. Uh, for the textbook questions, you get infinite tries, I believe. You can do them as many times as you like. I don't, I think I turned it so I didn't show the answer. Oh. Maybe it is only two. I thought it was infinite. OK. Um, well then, no, I know it doesn't show the answer. It does, I know it doesn't show the answer. And I'm sorry for that. But if we're going to mark for correctness, I can't show the answer to some people for obvious reasons. But 75% of the grade is just for showing up and putting something in the box. 25% is for being right. So do do think it through um, when you're going to do it. I might talk to Top Hat to increase the number of tries. I don't want to. Uh, that wasn't my instruction. So I'm going to get them to adjust that. The assignments, the the four assignments, that's what you mean, right? Um, I'm going to I'm going to butcher your name because I don't see any Malika. So the yes, OK, so the four assignments, I, I need to explore that a little bit further. I'm hoping to put them through Top Hat. Um, there's reasons for that on, on my part. Uh, Blackboard is the I will have a revolution from my GAs if I try and use Blackboard for it. So um, Top Hat will try and will try and put them through Top Hat. 
Uh, you won't need to know that you won't know the correct answer until December. Yes, for the in text questions, the ones at the end of the chapter. It will show you the correct answer. You can work through all of those. There are many, many, many more questions at the end of the chapter than within the chapter. Uh, I believe so, Amanda. So Amanda just asked once we receive unlimited tries for textbook questions, we'll be we'll take our last. Well, I, I, I share my screen, I guess. Um, last try we marked, I believe so. I think that overrides all previous tries. That's how these things normally work. Uh, if you get the right answer, you get full marks for being right. It will, yeah, it will tell you if you're right, or I think it does tell you if you're right, though. Try not to share the right answers with each other. If we find the, the GAs are all, I'm old, Dr. Icorn is old, our GAs are not old. Uh, if any of them find any evidence that anyone is sharing all this stuff, then you know we have to take action against that and, and start looking at IP addresses and stuff. And it's a pain in the ass, and I don't like doing it, but I, I have to do it. So do your own questions. Um, Josh, you had to swap class because you were in a 2305, and now you're waitlisted for the lecture in the lab. Um, email us, and we'll try and get you in. There's spaces in the lec. There's spaces in the lecture. I'm not sure why you're waitlisted. The labs only there's very select labs that have spaces left. Those are filling up fast. OK. I think this is 15 minutes after the end of lecture, so the scrum in front of the, the class is clearing out. Um, have a good rest of the day, all of you, and I will see you Monday.